Hey everyone, Senrai Kai here, back with episode 20 of Jahi Samawa Kujikenai. And last episode was a pretty big deal because so many questions we had, the overall premise of the show, the reason why Jahi is in the situation she's in, it was all revealed. And, you know, the, the bad news is Jahi had her life ruined and had to endure so much suffering just because of a spat between siblings. The good news is those two siblings made up, so, you know, maybe we could go up from here. I, I don't know exactly what the future holds, but last episode was definitely a pretty big step, so, yeah, we'll jump into this episode and see how see how things go. Jahi doesn't seem to be too eager to forgive Sue, and I definitely get it. I definitely understand, but we'll, we'll see how things go. If she can chill out a bit in the future, like, maybe Sue could just do something to make up for it. I don't think that's possible, but she could try, right? So, yeah, let's jump on in and see how things go in this episode. So... Three, two, one, play. Under a pair, oh yeah, do you get, do you get smashed? I mean, having a couple of powerful magical entities would make any project project go more quickly. Like if she can make people magical girls, I'm sure she can do a lot. Oof. Little damage. <laughs> well, that's good, I guess. Never plan on that. Trust me. She keeps saying that. <laughs> How many e katas does it take to make you nervous? Four. Oh, uh, party. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to read the sign. Uh, you, oh, on your own shop, okay. Okay, so we are going there. And yeah, some actually very nice food too. So this is a good first step to, you know, cheering up Jahi. Yeah, a lot did happen, but that was technically the plan. But also, there was some potential rethinking of it, so... I'm surprised there's no food left in that place. <laughs> yeah, not super friendly towards her. Not, not yet. Yeah, but that does not quite make up for all the trouble she put her through. Like, nowhere near. <laughs> That's a really cute blush, though. But, uh... Cuteness will, cuteness will only get you so far. But, man, it's getting her pretty far with me. <laughs> I w wouldn't surprise me. I mean, the place really, the place really wouldn't be the same without Jahi. Well, that's not true at all. They've already lose half their customer base. I know I would stop coming if she wasn't here. No, no, no offense to uh, anyone else that works there. Everything. Like, are you sure you want to leave all this, Jahi? In a parfait? Ah, my heart. Next to yours. Oh, right on cue. I mean, she was in charge of location, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a place. 3 million yen, though. It's not even the final price. 20 million. Uh, that's a lot of money. That might be out of her budget. <laughs> a little bit. A little, little bit. <laughs> I 
That was actually a very interesting way to open the door. I kind of want a gif of that. <laughs> That's your way of saying I would love to be here for the rest of my life. Tencho hug? That's a, that is an amazing Tencho hug. Uh, I can almost feel warmer from here. <laughs> She keeps saying that. If I was her, I would have said the same thing. <laughs> as well as ask Tencho to give me one. Both both those things. <laughs> I like that we can just improvise. <laughs> she just like turns on that blush. I mean, she's still the new kid on the block, you know, the new character. So, you know, soon needs a little bit of attention. <laughs> Which, I, yeah, I guess probably is the best compromise we're going to have. So, I, I, I'm, I'm good with it. I'm, I'm good with it. Well, yeah, I, I had no doubt in, on that. I was one to eat at a restaurant with that, like, really high view, like, seeing over the city. Cause I've seen that a few in a few shows and movies and stuff, and it always looks so like such a such a such an experience. You know, drinking your fancy wine in a glass and looking down on all the the peasants down below living their nor normal lives. I don't I don't think so. Yeah. Yes, that is what this would all be about. Japan has a lot of festivals. Yeah, some other time. She gonna get like snacks or something? Is that gonna make Jahi like reconsider? <laughs> okay, juice. Wait for it. <laughs> Give it some time. I'm sure it's gonna pile on. Prizes, you say? <laughs> what other one will we, will we be talking about? That your wiggles anymore, it's coming off. <laughs> so I've been rethinking the whole thing and, uh. <laughs> uh she is nothing if not predictable. I mean, any excuse for them to hang out, I will take, so no complaints for me. We'll see. Full name. Okay, <laughs> this is what we're doing. Can I make like a competitive nature to the situation? Have we ever seen them before? I'm pretty sure we haven't. You know, she can become bigger when she wants to be. Unlike you two. I don't like them. Yeah, if you knew who she was, you'd apologize right this second. She is the great Jahisama after all. That's what really cannot forgive. <laughs> Motivation fully engaged. <laughs> I 
And there's the thing. <laughs> I was curious what it looked like. It does look fairly heavy. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually just really it, it's something <laughs> hey everyone's here it would damage a little bit we were able to fix it it's no big deal <laughs> Probably weren't expecting to see that. <laughs> She's hanging out with her friend, trying to earn prizes, trying to help her friend. Yeah, it's cool because doing this kind of thing really does encapsulate that feeling of Jahi being a part of the community, you know? So, I, th I, guess, I, I guess that's probably why they have in this scene now. She gets the support from everyone, you know? Or you could phrase it that way, I guess. <laughs> That's how Jahi would phrase it. <laughs> yeah, it's basically the same. It's a little bit of a stretch, but let her believe. <laughs> yeah, I definitely could use some drinks after that. Yeah, Silla Mitch was panned on for quite a while. <laughs> I mean, if anyone's gonna be allowed, it would be Jahi. <laughs> I want you on your knees, boys. Dogiza. But who did the best? I, I hope it's Kokoro. <laughs> oh! Really? Okay. I mean, I'll take that too. <laughs> and of course, Kokoro is a good girl. She's going to be happy for her friend. I the one girl's twin tails. Jahi should try wearing twin tails one of these days. <laughs> Just a little bit. Oh wow, we actually got an apology. Okay, I have to take back what I said about you guys. So what's in the bag? I don't. Did we say? I think we just said it was a prize, right? <laughs> Shush. <laughs> she, she identifies as a child. Don't don't worry about it. I should hope so. If it wasn't for Kokoro, you wouldn't have been involved in this at all. What's in the bag? Is that like string? What is that? Oh, well, toys, I mean. It's a prize for kids, so... I mean, I, I was kind of thinking some kind of toy. Well, apparently we're... We're, uh... We're hitting the reverse on the kid thing with Jahi. Apparently it's not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> Somebody lurking behind the pole. Okay, I guess she had to show up eventually. <laughs> so do us, Summer. I love the way she said it. Even though it's all in her head. Oh no, I've been spotted. <laughs> oh yeah, I kind of forgot about that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Anna Holden. <laughs> That was quite the sound she made. <laughs> and that was such a step down in like volume and enthusiasm from her declaration of herself in her head. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't have friends. Don't be silly. 
<laughs> Man, they're really just all the roses. <laughs> so much sweat. <laughs> wow, she really got all dressed up and everything. <laughs> it's nice that she can participate too. It does look fun just getting to wave a flag around. Especially if you're doing it with Tensho. She actually looks surprisingly good in that outfit. <laughs> Even though this is so not what you came here for, but as long as you're happy, that's the important thing. But seriously, Sadoa pulled off pulled off pulled off that outfit really well. <laughs> Almost like I cut it down. <laughs> I'm sure she would love to. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit an exaggeration. Then though it's a good girl deep down. <laughs> oh my god, that is so unfair. Uh Tenja knows what she's doing. She could twist my arm. <clears throat> You'll be fine. Also, Jean Pied, I don't think I've heard that word before. But I think that's what she's calling. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's, she's pretty nice. Ooh, and I knew she would look good with that bandage top thingy, whatever it's called. But there was no question that she would look good on that. I guess you have to be okay after all. And she even gives you a head pat. Yeah, I think she's going to get a new appreciation for this sister now. I did go... <laughs> that's 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 fitting. Man, today was actually a really good day for her. Like usually she gets screwed over a lot, but yeah, this episode, you know, even if things didn't go as planned, she had a great time, bonded with people. <laughs> she was. She I was about to say. She gonna wear that? Oh my god! They can just get her to wear anything. <laughs> that is really that looks like cosplay. If anything it does, it's kind of like like emerald looking things in bed. Where did where did where did he show up? When did he show up? <laughs> Is there a blue one of those outfits? <laughs> That's another gift I want. <laughs> yeah, Jahi, but it's okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, what outfit to be in when you meet up with someone? This outfit is is kind of amazing. <laughs> kind of just got back to reality. I see. <laughs> what time? Sadua. <laughs> That's a dance, I think. <laughs> hey, it's something at least. Are you though? <laughs> I was waiting for her to say it. 
I've seen literally nothing wrong with that. I've seen nothing wrong with that outfit. <laughs> I, I see what you did there. <laughs> Don't yell at the narrator. And takoyaki is really not a proper festival without without takoyaki. <laughs> Hey, there's creeps over there. Hey, I recognize that memo. Recognize that girl. Yes, Japan has them. A lot of them. Yeah, I see Jahi holding hands with another girl. Oh yeah, she would love a festival, wouldn't she? Just all sorts of food everywhere. Oh. <laughs> okay, friends from school, I guess. You may have seen them before, I don't remember. <laughs> also, Jingu. She's just Kyoko to me. She's around here somewhere. <laughs> Seriously, give her something. Just one bite in those takoyaki. So I guess fireworks probably in a, in a second. <laughs> just everyone, like, like just a magnet. <laughs> Don't fight, Harem. <laughs> There we go, fireworks. I knew it was coming. It was just setting up so perfectly for it. And we're all here, so we get to enjoy it together. I was actually almost going to comment, is anyone going to say Tamaya? But he, he got it covered. <laughs> It's crazy how things go. <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah, those two are definitely made up at this point. Can't hold it intensifies, blushing intensifies. It's I live for that kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah, but a little bit longer. A few more years. Maybe a decade or two. Uh, I don't think so. I was for one final big one, and I definitely delivered that. And that's 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 the episode. Okay, that was the twentieth episode of Jahi Samawa Kujikenai. It was also the last episode of Jahi Kunwa Jahi Samawa Kujikenai, which twenty episodes is definitely an odd episode to have as the final one. So I actually went into this kind of forgetting that this was the last episode, but at a certain point, you can really feel the the climacticness building, like. You, that eventually, it did have that feel of the final episode, especially when we get to like the the festival stuff, you know. Especially like near the very very end, where we like all gather together to watch the fireworks. You don't really get much more final episode esque than that. In fact, I think I think uh, Kobayashi Maid Dragon season two had a festival and fireworks in their last episode. But uh, yeah, really good episode. I mean, uh, I have I have no complaints as far as this final episode goes. I think the first thing was the uh, like the party, right? Because we wanted to have a little bit of a celebration for Jahi because she was like 
having plans to get plans to get her own place, which is you know good for her. It's moving up in the world and all that. Although it had some sad aspects, like leaving this place, and that's sad because we all want to continue working together with Jahi. Jahi loves her work, loves working there. The customers love coming here for her, you know, being waited on by Jahi. And Kyoko started working there, I think, because of Jahi. But uh, yeah, just Jahi is kind of a the glue that connects a lot of people, right? So having her leave is a bit of a sad thing, but still we want to celebrate and you know send her off with a smile, sort of thing. But Jahi had a solution to this problem, just. Have Drew handle it all. It's like I left this project to you, so I have I have the utmost confidence in your ability to get it done. So good luck on that. And she did. We I think we got a shout out the skyscraper and all that. And I mean, Drew has already proven herself to be good, a great entrepreneur, business, you know, tycoon, CEO kind of person. So of course she could do it. And uh, yeah, Jahi's place is as a waitress, quite clearly, but. <laughs> So I think that's all I have to say about that scene. Although yeah, Drew had perfect timing when she when she did arrive. But you see, the next one was the festival, the start of the festival stuff. Because I mean, the festival stuff actually took the, like a big chunk of the episode was technically festival stuff because there was multiple parts. Because first of all, we showed uh, Jahi with Kokoro, which is the first thing we got, and Kokoro ha had a job. I don't remember exactly what they called it. Um, is, did they have a name for it? I mean, Johnny thought it was cosplay, which was kind of funny. Yeah, because she says she's going to carry the, the shrine around, which, you know, I've seen that in before, you know, like four people carrying the shrine around. I don't think I've seen someone her age do it in an anime, but maybe, maybe that's happened. But, uh, yeah, Jahi did not want to do it because it was, uh, it sounded like it was a bit of a, bit of a pain, right? So, uh, but, you know, as the pattern usually goes, she doesn't want to do something initially, but she learns something that he needs her mind. In this case, there was, like, a, like a prize. And, you know, Jahi hears that, the gold dollar signs pop up in the eyes. I mean, not literally, but they're there, they're there. there. And she rushes on over and says, you know what, Kokoro? I'm more than happy to help you because you are my friend and I love you and this will be great. So she more or less said that. So also, uh, Kokoro got juice, which was nice. But then we had like some competition. Like we had these two random nobody boys who I'm pretty sure we've never actually seen in the show being antagonistic and very in a very you know cliche like muhaha, you're going down, you guys suck. We're gonna win it because we're the best. If you ever seen any kind of competition show movie like that's such a common thing but uh, yeah they're, they're basically fitting that role there but uh yeah calling jahi a little shrimp or whatever just that's not cool that is so not cool especially you know with the knowledge we have of her being like you know a former hotshot of the demon world as well as have as well as having magical powers to grow bigger when she wants to whereas they cannot grow bigger when they want to so them calling her a shrimp when they're they're small, right? It just it makes no sense. That's why it kind of like infuri infuriated me more than it probably should. <laughs> so that was there was a little bit of that going on in, in my head. But yeah, we got to see the, all of them like carrying it, Jahi doing her best, and just the visual of Jahi doing that. I don't know how I don't, I don't have a word for it, but I don't know. It just I feel like that image is gonna stay with me for a long time. Just Jahi doing her best to hold up her corner of the shrine, you know, as we see that thing and the sweat on the fa face and all that. Just doing her best while her acquaintances just kind of spot her and wonder what the heck she's doing, right? Because Tensho and Land Landlady were there, too, doing their own thing. <coughs> Tensho talking to someone while, uh, you know, Landlady was just back there just saying nothing and didn't say anything until she spotted Jahi. That's when her attention gets peaked. But, uh, and then we got the uh, singing her praises scene where everyone's like, Yay, Jahi, you're the best. Go, go, go. You're, we love you. They More or less what they said. And Jahi was definitely enjoying that. You know, because she hasn't really gotten much of that center of attention treatment since she was number two in the demon world. And she said as much, you know, like, hey, it's like it's like back then. She said something like that. And, I, and of course, it's not anything like that, really, except in the sense of getting a lot of attention. But it's a bit of a stretch to, to say it's similar. But there was an element of it that was sim similar, and it gave her happiness. So I'm not, I'm not going to ruin that for her. But And she did get the prize in the end. I thought Kokoro might win, but, uh, yeah, Jahi titular character, I guess she's she's got to win it, but she wasn't too happy with it. I mean, <laughs> it was funny having like the commentary from you know Tensho landlady being like she's not even a kid. What's what's up with this, you know? But uh, they were they were gonna let it go. And eventually, Jahi also was like, "Screw this kid stuff." By the by the end of the scene, I do want to look at what's in the bag, like get a better look at it. 
Because, yeah, first thing was always like red, blue, and green lines or something. So, pretty clearly some kind of toy. I guess some kind of ring toy. But, yeah, we got, uh, let's see what we got here. We got a car. We got, I think, those, like, blowy party party favor kind of thing, you know. I think that's the official name. It's like a, another bag <laughs> within a bag. I think there's, like, a, a kendama in there. I think that's what it's called, the, the ball catchy thingy. Uh, there's also, I don't know, a couple of top-looking things. <laughs> and uh, is that, like, a mask? Like a cute anime girl mask or doll or something. It looks like a mask, judging by its size. But yeah, nothing that Jahi got too excited about. You know? uh, if it was a bag of gems, she would have. It would have been a, the best day ever. But no, nah, that was never going to be the prize of a children's competition. And all that stuff was good. I enjoyed all that Jahi stuff at the festival. But things got like a special kind of awesome once it became Salwa's turn. Uh, Salwa. Because, I mean, she's like. The butt of a lot of jokes, you know, things don't go well for her. Like, she's, a, she's, just, she's kind of a giant failure. The uh, Jahi, of course, is pretty pitiful in her way, but Solwa is pitiful in her own way, I guess is the best way to put it. But uh, in this episode, although we did although we did see her, like, fail at what she was trying to do, you know, the Jahi dominance, that kind of stuff, she succeeded in what the true goal of any festival is, which is to have fun. I actually lost track of how many times she said she had fun. She was having fun. But, uh, so it got pretty clear. And she met Tensho, which is funny because last time she saw her was in the bath. So that probably added a bit of an awkward, uh, you know, element to the conversation, right? But uh, I think she handled it pretty well for the, for the most part. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, she asked her for a favor and she can't, she can't say no to that. So we got Salva all dressed up in the festival attire. You know, she's got the, the, the top bandage thingy and the, the thingy that goes over it. And she's got the flag and she's, you know, hoya hoying. You know, washai, whatever, whatever they say. <laughs> and she was just having a great time. <laughs> I just, yeah, because I'm, I'm watching, you know, I kind of skim into it as I'm talking about it. And she, yeah, she just looks like she was having so much fun. But it never ended. <laughs> she went from doing that to having to take over the drummer position as well. Which, because uh, that was something she did with Tencho, I think. And this was something she did with Landlady, who she is a little bit, a little bit afraid of, I guess. But, uh, you know, we know she's a good girl deep down. Even if she comes off a bit more rough, Yankee, violent, you know, than maybe Tencho. She's, she's, still, she's still a good girl, you know? That's uh, that's the important thing. And by the end of the scene, Salwa really did get a, a chance to reevaluate her, you know? Get a... See her in a new light kind of thing. But, uh, man, that shot of Salwa just bent over. <sighs> and yeah, she got, a, she got a head pat. And that's what really, I think, brought everything together, you know, in the scene. But, uh... Yeah, I just, I just, she was just so happy for so much of this overall scene, like, and I just love how she got, like, a new outfit for each one, and they just got progressively, actually, she may have the same outfit for the first and second one, I'm not sure, but the third one, she definitely had a different outfit, because it was just, like, this green, feathery, jewel, I don't even know how to describe it, two-piece kind of thing, I really don't know how to describe it, but it, it was... It was something special, and I still kind of can't believe she was convinced to wear that. I know she was kind of like going with the flow, getting caught in the current, you know, kind of kind of thing. But but man, it's a great outfit. I mean, she looks great in it. So, but yeah, just man, I love the one scene when she was kind of like you know like wiggling her hips around. She's very gifable. I, I I need a gif of it. But I think yeah, I think the that's that part really came together with uh, Jahi discovering her. Because that, you know, not only is it there's the embarrassment of an acquaintance of yours seeing you in an embarrassing situation slash outfit, but also it was a it kinda like, you know, knocked on that head of hers of like, Oh yeah, I was this is not what I came here to do. I came here for her I came here for her. What's how did how did everything go wrong? Right? So that was a, a good payoff there. Right? <laughs> All the realizations and stuff at once just it was good. It was well. It was done. It was done well. And the festival still wasn't over because there was even more stuff to do. We had uh, Kokoro just dragging Jahi around, and we had like the magnetic power of Jahi bringing them all together. So they had a chance to actually look at the fireworks and watch them together. And we had a little bit of you know infighting in the amongst the harem, <laughs> you know, just them all gl glaring at each other. I, I quite I quite enjoyed that interaction. But yeah, the fireworks were nice. We even had our fake magical girl character, you know, in this episode. Just I guess so the audience doesn't forget about him. I fair enough. He didn't really do much in the scene in, in the episode, but he was in a couple shots. You know? But yeah, that was the episode. I, I I quite liked it. And yeah, this is usually where I would talk about my thoughts on this show as a whole. 
which uh, it might be, it might take a while. So I might somewhat abridge it. Okay. <clears throat> so the person that really attracted me to this show was Ja. I bit my tongue. Jahi. She was voiced by the same voice actress that does Satanya. And it's straight up the, the same voice, like pretty much identically same kind of voice she does for this character too. And Gabriel Dropout, which is what Satanya is from, is one of my favorite anime. You know, I know like a lot of people considered it to be kind of meh or whatever, but uh, I, I didn't. I loved it when I first watched it, and I've watched it at least a dozen times since then. So, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I quite like the show, and since Satanya was my favorite character in that show, and you didn't actually have a bit of a re a recall. A re reincarnation. I don't know what the best word for it would be, but getting to experience that that Satanya voice again in this was was great. Although at a certain point, I did kind of stop associating the voice with Satanya as much. I mean, there were like moments here and there where she like real. I really could feel the Satanya vibe from her, but for the most part, at a certain point, I was just like, no, this is Jahi's voice. Jahi and stopped being a just poor man Satanya <laughs> to be in just her own character that I that just enjoyed for for being her own character, right? Which is, you know, inevitable to get to that point at some point. But, uh, yeah, and Jahi herself, you know, separated from Satanya, I really liked her as a character. She was a lot of fun to watch. Her, like, soon that a, you know, borderline soon that a thing she says because she can't just, like, admit that she likes humans, wants to spend time with them, cares about them. You know, she always says it in her, in her like, vague, you know, uh, downplaying way. Like, a lot of things she would say in that kind of way. Because she has so much like pride from the days she was number two in Demon World, and she just yeah she held on to that. <clears throat> and the court and that's what pretty much what the show was about was this girl who had that kind of title position in a whole different world, pretty much you know having the slate wiped clean uh, as far as circumstances goes, <clears throat> and has to do her best in a brand new unfamiliar world. But her slate isn't truly clean because she has that mental baggage, right? Like I. I am second in command in Demon World. People worship the ground I walk on and serve me. Why would I have to just, you know, work for these humans? Like, I'm entitled to all these things I've always had. Like, she had kind of that attitude, which was understandable. Because when you do knock someone down from grace like that, you can't just, like, 180 your 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 way of thinking. But Jahi, luckily, had some people that cared about her that were more than willing to help her. The two sisters, you know, one to give her a job, one to give her a place to live. Two very helpful things when you happen to... When you've been thrown into a new environment. So having those people that do those things for her, those practical, beneficial things, as well as just caring about her a lot, being her friend, always being there for her, made a really big difference in her in her, in her life. So what could, what was already a fairly pitiful situation could have been much more pitiful if it was not for those two. But uh, and even with those two, she still had not the greatest apartment, you know, not the greatest job, but it was still something she could build from. And if you compare it to, like, Druja's big old top of the world position it, it's not much but it is a, a fine starting point and jahi over the course of the show got to really appreciate what she what she had there because she may not have had servants but she had like friends family and at a certain point i think she realized how how important that was <coughs> so yeah i've got to see jahi go through that that transition to, over the course of the show from like tolerating the as it, tolerating the existence of the other humans to really loving them appreciating them understanding them, all that good stuff, right? And we got to see all, all the people that helped her with that. But, uh, yeah, the show was a comedy, and I thought a lot of the comedy was was quite funny. I just a really enjoyable cast, because we had also Druge, which was Hanakana, which also voiced a character in Gabriel Dropout, funny, funnily enough. And Hanakana's pretty much my favorite voice actress. Uh, I mean, it's kind of more or less tied between her and, you know, Yuki Aoi, but, uh, you know, just, it, it's it's like that. But she was in the show, and she, I think, brought a lot to the Druish character. And, uh, yeah, I like Druish a lot, because she was, she liked Jahi a lot, and she was also quite masochistic, and a lot of fun, a lot of comedy can be derived from that. But we also had Kyoko, our magical girl that just caused the whole plot, you know. She was one that just showed up one day in front of Jahi, Broke the magical crystal stuff and sent Jahi into her into the plot, right? Of, of the show. And yeah, she was pretty much from day one the antagonist of the show. But eventually we learned who she was, you know, a little bit about little learned a little bit about her circumstances, you know, that she's not a bad person, and we were able to become friends with friends with her too. And as we unlock the mystery of who the true antagonist is, but even the true antagonist could barely be called an antagonist because there really wasn't much antagonistic feelings. It was just a bit of a spat between the siblings that got out of hand. 
which is yeah that the situation itself is bad, but the person that did it you know, not not so much like not not like a muhaha mustache twirling villain Sue certainly wasn't that, but uh, so yeah there really wasn't any kind of like evil overarching bad guy to the show really, the the villain was more or less just circumstances right, that's the the, the adversary the antagonist that Jahi had to deal with but. But, uh, yeah, we also had Sadawa, which, uh, for a while, I was kind of, like, mixed on what I thought of her, right? Because she just seemed kind of meh compared to a lot of the other great characters in the cast, but I don't know. Once we started to get the, uh, like, I think around the time when she was given magical girl powers, my my perception of her started to alter a little bit. I don't know how to describe it, but I don't know. I feel like at the point I was starting to, like, see a bit more of the character's charms and by the end of the show especially with what they did in this episode. I could say she's not too far behind the other characters for me, really, so just no, no real complaints about the cast. I thought they were all great. Because yeah. we all the demons that knew previous Jahi and, of course, the Tensho and Landlady sisters were, were fantastic, both in their in their respective ways. Because they're sisters, you know, so they... So you can see some similarities there, but they're also, like, very, very different, distinct characters. And I, I definitely enjoyed everything they brought to the show. Uh, definitely. And, of course, Kokoro, you know, the world's purest, best, you know. Uh, the, she's a, the, the peak of good girl, right, Kokoro? And uh, that's somebody that Jahi definitely needs in her life as a, you know, previous demon person. She gets to see that, that pure light, ray light, shining beacon of light that, that Kokoro is. So, yeah, Kokoro definitely did, did good work as far as helping Jahi open her heart up to humanity and all that. But I think I covered all the characters. Hopefully. Hopefully I did. <coughs> I mean, not all, all the characters, but the important ones, right? Uh, so, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I got to say on the show. Like, I really, really enjoyed it. It's pretty much just about my favorite show in the season that came out. Really, the only real competition was Kanajo Mo Kanajo. But uh, there, one's a one-core show, one's a two-core show, so I don't really want to compare them anyway. But but uh, Jahi definitely was like a top-tier kind of show for me, and I probably will buy the Blu-rays, you know, if and when that that comes out. It's probably it's I think it's, it has reset level for me, right? But uh, for now, this is the end. I don't know if there's been any like season two announcements or anything like that, or if there's source if there's or or if there's more source material to cover. But uh, if there ever is more Jahi, I will certainly watch it. No. No question about that. So, if you enjoyed my reaction to this show, please click the like button, subscribe, support me on Patreon, maybe leave a comment, let me know what you think of the show, what was your favorite character, what was your just overall thoughts on the show, and I hope to see you in uh, some some other some other video that I make in the future, or maybe one that I've made in the past. But uh, yeah, until then, bye bye.